Hi everyone, welcome to the September Garden Tour. Can you believe it's already September? It just seemed like yesterday we were all celebrating spring together and enjoying planting our spring vegetables. And here it is fall. So I wanna show you around the garden. It actually still feels like summer here in Southern California. We've got some hot weather this week. I had, I've had shade cloth up, but uncovered it so we could do the garden tour. It's an absolutely beautiful evening in the garden. And yes, camera guy and I are really enjoying being outside. We love these evenings. We love it. Still feels like summer here. We actually have a couple of months of warm weather left. So what I've actually been doing is popping in some brand new tomato plants. I had one unfortunately right here that was taken out by spider mites this week. I just couldn't save it. And sometimes it's a lot better to start over with a new plant, even though it was really hard for me to pull it. So I pulled that one out and I planted a tomato sun sugar in the back. Actually, that's been in there for a little bit. I was just kind of waiting to pull the plant out. So I weaved it in through the trellis and I did notice that it does have a few spider mites on it. Oh, those spider mites are just absolutely crazy. Never ending. Oh, never ending battle. Um, let me see if I can find a couple to show you guys. You really got to watch out for those guys. When you see the spotted leaves, here we are right here. That's a sign that you have spider mites. So what you want to do is go ahead and spray your plant off with water just to get them off. And then you can spray it with like a neem oil or insecticidal soap or something like that to help take care of it. But they are a tough one to get rid of. So the plant right next to it is the apple yellow. No, not the apple yellow. This is the morning sun tomato. It is an absolutely beautiful tomato. It's actually putting on a second crop. So we, we harvested these a while back and the morning sun, they're just so, so beautiful and super, super tasty. So we'll probably get another good crop of tomatoes on this plant. And uh -oh. oh my gosh. Did you see it? Yes, I just saw it. I, did anyone else see it? Oh my gosh. Let's see if anyone else sees it. Tell us when you see it. I noticed it when I was uh, um, coming in closer. Oh, do you guys know what this is here? The dreaded tomato hornworm. Oh. If you uh, follow me on Instagram, I found one in another part of the garden the other day oh, that was oh absolutely focus. giant. This one, thankfully we found it. It's still small. It hasn't eaten too much of the tomato plant yet. But these are, are uh, I don't even want, know what you want to call them, creatures that you do not <laughs> want to have on your tomato plants because they have absolutely voracious appetites. They can strip the leaves of the plant. So one thing you want to look for as a sign of hornworms is when all the leaves of the stems are stripped off your plants yep. and they have pretty good sized black droppings. You can see there's a black dropping kind of hanging off of him right here. But when you see those black droppings on your plant, that is the sign of a hornworm. So thankfully he's still a baby, hasn't eaten too much yet. What I like to do with these guys is I break the stem off. Now they do turn into a really pretty butterfly but I don't keep them around long enough to see that. But if you're brave enough, you can hang on to them, put them in a bin or put them in another part of your garden. But I, what I usually do with these is I toss them in a bin like this that I already have some tomato leaves or garden, you know, things I've trimmed off, toss them in there and I put it in my green can, which gets picked up by the trash <laughs> once a week. So we can chow down in there as long as he's not on my tomato plants, we'll be doing good. Fair enough. So hopefully, <laughs> Number two hornworm is our last one. But anyway, this is a gorgeous morning sun tomato. Get a great fresh round off of these. Got some little tiny babies coming on. Tons of green ones. And I have been um, fertilizing this. I believe I gave it some uh, good dirt plant food, some worm tea a couple of weeks ago, maybe some fish fertilizer. And it's putting on a fresh new crop. So that's always exciting. Now I want to show you down here underneath these basil plants are doing absolutely fabulous. Now, sometimes basil doesn't like super hot temperatures. So I like to kind of plant them where they get a little bit of shade. So getting a nice little shade from the tomato and from the cucumber and they're doing absolutely beautifully. But what you want to do is make sure that you prune your basil regularly. So about once a week or so, what you can do is come in here and pinch kind of down where the, the leaves kind of join and meet the next set of leaves coming out. So you'll have your little basil harvest. And then what that does is make your plant nice, nice and bushy instead of tall and lanky. And definitely harvest it before the flowers come on because when it blooms, it changes the flavor. Oh, and this smells absolutely fabulous. Go really well 
with the tomato I just picked. <laughs> so right over here is, um, this is kind of a conglomeration in this cage here. They've got a, this is a cucumber growing that volunteered and some purple tomatillos that volunteered as well. In fact, I'm gonna show you these. There's one down at the bottom that a squirrel picked. We've been having <laughs> lots of squirrel problems. I saw half eaten one on the other side, but aren't these gorgeous? That is. Really, really pretty. So these will make really nice salsa verde or salsa purple. I'm not sure how you say that, but <laughs> so these are really pretty. I'm looking forward to harvesting those probably in another month or so. And I'm going to go around the back here because we've got a nice long cucumber I wanted to show you guys. So hopefully you're still getting some good summer vegetables in your garden. Maybe it's coming to a close, but you definitely be, want to be growing your fall garden as well. We'll talk about that in just a moment. But uh, we've got some good little cucumbers in here. This is actually a volunteer as well. It kind of looks like the Japanese long thin, but I'm not too sure what it is. I'm going to leave that on there just a little bit longer because these can then can get probably about a foot or so long. They don't get bitter and they're just an absolutely delicious cucumber. One thing I'm really enjoying about the garden right now is the zinnias are really just starting to pop out. I got my zinnias planted kind of late this year, but there's all kinds of colors. I don't even know what this one's called. Some kind of a lime queen or something like that. Look at that gorgeous, gorgeous color. And zinnias wow. love the hot weather. That really is. Isn't that beautiful? There's just so many different That's colors in that flower. And the cool thing about zinnias, is you can plant them all summer long. And when you trim them right where, again, where the stem kind of joins the leaves, it really encourages more blooming. So it's fun to bring them in the house and then fun to have tons and tons of blooms. Man, I've never noticed these before. These gorgeous. Have we always had them? I've had, yeah, I, I grow them a lot. I have the oh, California yeah. Giants in one of my seed collections, the warm weather seed collection. But uh, this is a different variety. Wow. And here the lily puts are one of my favorite. This is a much smaller type of zinnia. It's more of a dwarf zinnia. Mm. These are in the container garden seed collection. However, this one actually grew quite large. The flowers are small, but this one grew probably a couple feet or so. And you can see more of the flowers right over here. They're pretty. Yes, that is really pretty. And you guys, here's some more of the giant oh. zinnias. These are, blooms are absolutely beautiful. So it is nice to plant flowers that bloom throughout the growing season. Now it's coming into cool weather time. So you might want to start planting your cool weather flowers, or if you live in a southern climate, you could probably get maybe another crop of zinnias. One of my favorite flowers too is these Gerbera daisies. These absolutely love the hot weather. I mean, we've, have, we've had temperatures in the high 90s this week, and these just keep on going. I've, I think I've had these in here for almost a year or so. Really pretty. So they keep coming back. Now I gotta come around the front because I want to show you guys on a video a few weeks ago, if you remember, we talked about in our fall garden series, how to plant carrots. Super exciting. Take a look here, guys. Remember I told you to cover it with um, shade cloth or burlap. Keep the soil moist so that your carrots germinate. Sometimes they can take two to three weeks to germinate. Mm. These came up in about a week. So here we have, in spite of our hot weather, here we have teeny tiny little carrot seedlings popping through the soil, which is always exciting. So if you haven't yet started your fall garden, grab my fall garden seed collection and get yourself some fall seeds planted. And I am having a sale this weekend, 25% off with the code fallgarden over at calikimgardenhome.com. So we'll see you over there. Now, over in this section, we've got a lot of tomatoes. Typically, in, uh, here in my garden, we get our best tomato harvest in August, September, and October. So these are doing actually very, very well. This is the um, Golden Jubilee tomato, and the plant is looking a little bit, you know, worn from the heat and everything, but we've got some really nice green tomatoes that should be ripening up very soon. And this one here, I think, is actually ready to harvest. Yep, looks like it is. It has a little bit of, I don't think it's blossom end rot, but some type of something at the bottom there. Maybe it's cat facing or something like that, which can happen in the warm weather. And here's a perfect example of spider mites, guys. This plant is really getting taken over. They love the hot, dry weather, which we've had a lot of. So you can really see the speckling on the leaves in here. Yep. 
and once the plant gets that it's really hard to get rid of them um, the best thing you can do is catch them right away and then um, spray them with like the insecticidal soap or something like that but here you can even see they're making little webs here teeny teeny tiny little spider mites and I think I'll probably have to go ahead and take this plant out unfortunately and whenever you see these little brown droppings, that's also the sign of something, probably some kind of a worm chowing down on your plant. I don't think it's a hornworm, but uh, this plant is definitely on its way out. And you know what? That's okay because I wanna make room for the fall vegetables. So this one will come out and as it gets cooler, we'll plant some fall vegetables in its place. Now I wanna show you something over here I just noticed on the Golden Jubilee. This is actually classic hornworm damage. So there's probably a hornworm around here somewhere. So you really do want to look out uh, when you see these signs on your plant. See how those leaves are all stripped from this branch? So when you see those, you really want to inspect your plant very carefully because those green hornworms blend in so, so easily. And you can better believe I'll be checking all my tomatoes very carefully, probably uh, as soon as we're done filming here. Now these tomatoes over here I'm actually really excited about. They're coming back for one last hurrah, especially this one here. I almost pulled this plant out about midsummer. This is called, if I remember the name, I think it's called the Domingo. These I got from, yes, from a cliff. This was going to be one Aww. of my giant tomatoes. But come around this side, Jerry, okay. because there are some really nice big huge tomatoes on here. It's a first for me. Whoa. Look at these. Aren't these massive? Yeah. Yeah, you can see why they're giant tomatoes, and I think I might have to put the netting over it to protect it from the critters. And there's lots of little babies in here. Some right in here, so I should get a really nice crop off of this. So let me know what, if you have any kind of latecomers to your garden, and uh, you know what you think you're going to be getting as a late tomato crop. So let me just see. Oh my gosh, Jerry, here's another one. Huh. Oh, I can't believe this. I almost missed it. Oh, it blends Another right in. Another one. Look how that blends yeah, right in. Yeah, you don't in. even see that. I was just looking for more tomatoes. Wow. Good eyes. Okay, so this one's going to get snapped off too. They do grab on to the stems um, pretty tightly, so I don't really like to pull them off. I mean, they are kind of gross looking, but strangely beautiful as well, I think. And you can see down in here, here's a better example of their droppings. So look for the stripped leaves, the stripped stems. Look for these big black droppings. That's classic hornworm signs right there. Now I want to show you over here wait, some of the peppers. Wait, 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 before you go over there, can I just show everyone the sun setting? Oh, of course. And just look at the lighting right now. I love this time of the evening. So pretty. You can see it on the trees, the sun hitting there. I just, I just love filming right now. The Sugar Rush peppers over here, and I really appreciated everybody's tips on our last tour. Maybe it was our harvest video. These are, I actually thought they were sweet peppers, and a lot of you told me that they are super hot, and I went back and looked them up, and yes, they are. And then I tasted one and realized that they really are hot. But um, they're, they take forever to ripen, and I don't think they've even changed colors since we did our harvest video several weeks ago. So I'm going to go ahead and leave them on there a little bit longer. They're really an interesting shape, though. That's cool. Yeah, those are really but different. You better watch out. <laughs> now I did. Um, we did make some salsa out of these little guys. I love these. These are called natapinos, and they are uh, by Baker Creek. They have a classic jalapeno flavor, but absolutely no heat. So they're really a nice pepper. Love That's those. That's my speed right yeah. there. And these here are the Jimmy Nardellos. These are looking a little bit yellow. I think I might be giving these too much water over here. Um, that's a classic sign of overwatering, or they could need some nitrogen. So if you have yellowing leaves, those are two things to look for. But these Jimmy Nardellas have been a longtime favorite of mine. And these are coming on again for a second crop. We actually have some friends coming over for Labor Day, so we'll probably be grilling those up um, on Monday. Now I want to take you to the other side of the planter because I'm so excited. A garden summer first. Not a first, but just a first for me this summer, <laughs> that makes sense. Very excited, almost excited as I am for the blackberries. Here we are, guys. Better late than never, the black beauty 
Eggplant is ready to harvest. Ooh, I'm so ooh. excited. I've been watching oh, yeah. these grow. All right. She's been wanting this to do this all day. plant, you guys, <laughs> I'm so excited. It is loaded down with eggplant. I've got to show you. I'm just super excited. Look at this beauty. Can you see why it's called Black Beauty? Isn't that gorgeous, Jerry? Yeah, that really is. Oh my gosh, I love it. But we've got one, two, three, um, a big one in back, yep. four, five, six, seven eggplant right now, wow. and a lot more flowers on here. So we are gonna harvest. This I've is been it. wanting to do this. These are definitely going on the grill Monday. I'm so excited, guys. And uh, zucchini, not zucchini, um, eggplant is ready to harvest when it's this deep purple color. Isn't that beautiful? And would you look at the shine? That is classic ready to harvest. So we're going to definitely pull these off. Once they start to get dull, the seeds inside start to get um, large and the eggplant turns a little bit more bitter. So you really want to catch it when it has that beautiful sheen and the deep purple color. Oh my gosh. I'm going to stay white on this <sighs> shot so we can just watch the whole so process pretty. happen. Now they are a little bit prickly. I'm not wearing gloves. So you do have to kind of be careful, but you want to cut it above the stem, above the um, this green part here, I forget what that's called, but just cut it off. Got my shears here. You don't want to pull it because then you're going to damage the plant. This is so pretty. So let me know if you're growing Black Beauty eggplant. These are from my eggplant seed collection. It's just so rewarding to plant something from seed, to see it grow, and then to come out and harvest it. The little ones here, I'm going to leave on a little bit longer. They are still kind of shiny, but I'd like to see them size up. So we'll leave those on there. Maybe they'll be ready in a week or so. There's one back here that I wrapped in netting to protect it from the squirrels. And it looks like it's been pretty successful. I don't see any nibbles out of it. This one actually, I don't know if you guys can see this. It's, it's a little more dull than the other one, mm -hmm. which means it's just a tad overripe. I can see that. Can you see that? I'll hold them up together in a second. So basically I'm just clipping it right here. Like, you know, leave a little bit of the stem attached to the plant. And I'll show you guys. The difference in the shine. This one is just a little bit duller at the top, whereas the one in this hand is nice and shiny. So try and catch them when they still have that sheen. I did want to talk about these flowers just for a second here because a lot of you have asked about them. These are called profusion zinnias. These are actually the bicolor. Aren't these beautiful? The yellow with the pink center. I also grow the red profusion and the white profusion, and these are one of the best heat tolerant flowers that you can grow. They're an All America Selections winner, so you can check them out over all, allamericaselections.org, and they do not fade in the heat. Um, you know, you have to deadhead them a little bit, and they, they are getting nibbled by bugs, but they're just a beautiful hot weather flower. And down in here is some more California Wonder Peppers. And some of you asked about this pepper on our last harvest video. This is called, let me just double check the name. It's called the, the Blot, it's a sweet pepper. And I don't know for sure why it's called blot, but the purple and yellow color is absolutely amazing. So I'm going to leave this on and maybe come back out and pick it so it's fresh for eating on Monday for our barbecue. Got to show you the California Wonder plant here that is loaded, loaded down with these huge Whoa. peppers. These are just beautiful. From the pepper seed collection, I think they're in spring garden and also in container garden seed collection. Just gorgeous and they'll be changing colors. Um, here real soon and we will be grilling those or stuffing them or doing something with them. Okay, this is definitely my favorite tomato of the summer right here. This is Aunt Ruby's German Green. These are only in the tomato seed collection and beautiful. We lost several to rats and I just noticed here I got to pick this one because it is ripe and once it gets ripe it starts uh, getting a little bit mushy, so I don't want to leave it on too long. So I'm going to go ahead and pick this one, and maybe we'll eat it for dinner tonight. Look at that color. It's just beautiful, a little bit of a kind of orangish type striping, and it has a nice little give to it. And you can tell the difference between um, this ripe one and these other ones on here that aren't ripe. A lot of people say, how do you know when a green tomato is ripe? Let me pick this one. And you guys can see, see, not ripe and ripe. Look at the color difference. Squeeze it, it's soft. This one is completely hard. Hmm. 
Now over here, the scarlet runner beans are actually starting to slow down. And you can see how they're browning from the bottom up. So these will probably get pulled out within the next month or so. It always makes me sad to do that because I love the Scarlet Runner beans. And the Smart Pots deck is doing really well. We've got some peppers, some squash, a lot of zinnias, some mums, a really beautiful tomato. Oh, sorry, Jerry. I know we weren't going to stop here, but <laughs> we got to come over and see this tomato. Okay. <laughs> this was also kind of, I, don't, I hope there's no hornworms on here. This was also a late tomato that I planted. <laughs> It just is going crazy. There's tomato branches everywhere and tons of tomatoes in here. This is another of the morning sun. So this is a really, really productive tomato. If you're looking for a small cherry, the yellows are super sweet. And there's just tomato branches absolutely everywhere. So it's crazy. Well, we're gonna head up the hill and I wanna show you something else I'm very excited about, the passion fruit. The vine is growing and filling in this trellis beautifully. Every day I'm having to come up, come out here and tuck in vines and there's several passion fruit on here. These flowers are gorgeous. So I'll post a picture this week on my Instagram. This one's closing up, which means that the fruit is forming in the center. They are just absolutely stunning. But there are several fruit on here. I'm hoping to get more. These are the California giant zinnias. So, so pretty. I love these. They're super tall, climbing up the trellis. Sugar baby watermelon. These are from the melon seed collection and the container garden seed collection. I did want to show you this plant here because this is one of my all-time favorite tomatoes as well. This is the Kellogg's Breakfast. We've already harvested several off these. This is very similar to the Golden Jubilee from my tomato seed collection. And here you can see I've got the critter, uh, critter control on here. But these tomatoes are fairly good sized as well. So, so sweet. And what I've been doing to my tomatoes is every couple of days coming out and trimming off. See how, see how this leaf right here is yellowing? That typically happens late in the summer, classic sign of some type of tomato disease. So really keep an eye out for your tomatoes as they start to yellow. Snap off the whole entire branch, not just the yellow leaf. This one's thankfully a small one because I've been trying to keep up with it. Snap that off and because it will spread throughout your plant and really can take your plant out. So try and keep up with it if you can. Lots of tomatoes on here, had to take out that um, apple, another apple yellow here because of spider mites. So I'm leaving this space empty. Now it's really hard for me to leave empty spaces in the garden, but I wanna leave some empty spots for fall veggies. I wanna put some peas in here, which would be really nice because the trellis is already in place. So you don't have to take your tomato plant, your tomato trellises out. You can plant your fall veggies, especially if you live in a Southern climate where you're gonna be able to grow fall veggies during the winter time. And then here I popped in another tomato. I took an eggplant out here that was at the end of its life. This, I believe, I bought a couple transplants. I think this is called a husky. This is actually a better bush. So this is a determinate tomato, which will go um, to harvest fairly quickly. So I should be able to get some more tomatoes out of that. Now, right behind me here, I've got a really nice looking zucchini plant. Harvested several off here. Now, we have had some powdery mildew issues. So this plant, I've actually been spraying down with Bonides neem oil, and it has had fantastic results. So this is a concentrate. Put it in my little um, pump sprayer here, fill it with water, and all the directions are on the back, and then you pump this thing up. This is pretty handy. Someone was asking me about this. You pump it up, and then I don't know if there's even anything in here. Oh, there is. You spray it on your plant, and that way you don't have to have those spray bottles that you have to squeeze all the time. It makes it a lot easier if you have a lot to spray. So it's been working really well and there's not even any powdery mildew left on the leaves. Nice. Yeah, so it's really worked great. And look here, guys. This was not here the other day when I was out here spraying these. We've got a zucchini coming on and hopefully it's gonna get pollinated or it has already gotten pollinated. It will start to grow and we'll have zucchini probably within a couple of days. <laughs> Those things grow so fast. You might notice this trellis here looks kind of bare because my cucumbers have gotten a haircut recently. I pulled off some of the old and diseased leaves, gave it a good dose of fertilizer. It'll get a nice boost here for the end of the season. But there are still a ton of cucumbers on this plant. Something really exciting is that 
The plant is climbing up over the top. I know it looks a little bit bare, but it's climbing up over the top of these ladder mesh trellises. Look at all these little baby cucumbers on here. So we'll probably still get a great harvest here at the end of the season. Mm. And this cool cucumber shot. trellis in here, you guys, so this whole trellis got a really good trimming the other day. The cucumbers were growing out <laughs> and really shading out this whole area. You remember, this is where we planted the summer salad station and it really got shaded out by these cucumbers. So it's not growing super great yet, but it's gonna really take off here. So the kale I've been trimming up and there's still a whole bunch of humongous cucumbers that I haven't harvested yet. Oh my gosh, look at this one right back here that yellow one. I gotta pull that one off because you guys gotta see this. You definitely wanna harvest your cucumbers before they get this size, but this one got missed. Wow. Now it's supposed to be green, so it's way overripe. We actually ate one of these the other night and it wasn't bitter at all. This is the Market More, and I was super, super surprised. I thought it would be really bitter, but it was pretty good. Had very large seeds, but it tasted great. So I'll be harvesting these probably tomorrow and giving a bunch to the neighbors, to family, because um, we've had a lot of cucumbers this year. So that's very exciting. Now, a little note about kale, you guys. This was probably about this tall. Um, remember I did a video on it maybe a month ago, but it was just getting eaten by bugs, kind of got some heat damage. So if your kale is not looking so good, don't pull it out. What you want to do is go through and cut everything off. See how these are just super, super short and they will grow back. So keep it watered, give it a nice fertilizer dose and you'll get some great new green growth here. So we'll probably have kale from this all winter long. Now here on this side of the garden bed, I planted some more tiny Tim tomatoes. So these I started from seed, I don't know, maybe a couple months ago, popped them out in the garden and they were getting totally shaded again by the cucumbers. So these are the tiny Tims. They only grow to about two feet tall, a really nice dwarf container tomato. And they produce probably in about 60 or 70 days. So we should get some nice crops off those as well. Now, one of my favorite little spots and Jerry just filmed this a few minutes ago is this archway here. I've grown on these uh, ladder mesh trellises for years, but this I think is the first year that I've had so much growing in over the top. So it's very exciting. In fact, I think the arch is kind of starting to fall over a little bit. So we may have to <laughs> kind of shore that up a little, but look at this cucumber here, you guys. Another Whoa. market more, it's giant. It grew from the trellis in the garden bed we just looked at. I had no plans to trellis it and it just got a mind of its own. And uh, wow. it's just crazy big. So we definitely need to harvest that one as well. Probably gonna have some kind of cucumber appetizer on Monday too. Um, but these are the best tomatoes. These are the large red cherry. These are from the tomato seed collection. These are so incredibly delicious. A little bit larger than your typical cherry tomato. We've been making salsa out of these, putting them in salads, just yeah, eating them those have fresh. Been really good. Oh, they're so good. And, um, <laughs> The tomato plant, I have a, a large red cherry, cherry, I gotta put my basket down, on either side of this ladder mesh. Now the ladder mesh you can find at Home Depot, you do have to ask for it, it's in the contractor's department. It's uh, two pieces, it makes about, I think each piece is seven foot tall, and they're attached together here with cable ties. I'll put a link to the video where we installed these so you guys can know what to do if you wanna put them in. But the tomato on this side is growing up over the top. There's another tomato. Let's see, let me turn around so people yeah. can see. I can't. And the zinnias too, which are gorgeous. <laughs> and the sunflowers. <laughs> okay. Okay. So um, there's a tomato on this side. Now this one's not quite growing as well because the sunflower forest is shading it out. But they're growing up and we've got a beautiful meet in the middle type situation here. The sunflower forest has been just absolutely stunning this year. It is kind of starting to die out. There's lots of crispy leaves here. Oops, that one just came off. And I've been having to trim it back because it's getting way overgrown. So unfortunately, we'll probably be having to take this out pretty soon, but we've really, really enjoyed it. Now, this is a brand new plant that I popped in this month. This is called chocolate sprinkles. I'm gonna pick one of these. See how they grow in like, these are called little trusses. 
They're all in a row here. This one's ready. Isn't that a gorgeous tomato? Very prolific. So this will be a good um, kind of second wave of tomatoes for us in the fall here too. We're gonna head up here to the herb garden, but Jerry, how you doing back there? Oh good, I this know. meandering path is tricky. I yeah, got... he's filmed on a hill on steps, so it's a little yeah, bit difficult. Let me difficult. show you guys just real quick. <laughs> so sometimes I just have a hard time keeping up with Kim. <laughs> I, uh... It's hard to keep your balance when you're holding the camera yeah, and it's... following me. All right, I'm good, thank you. So the herb garden has been really grown in well this month. <laughs> Hey, and we planted this, I think, gosh, back in January or February. And I love having herbs so close to the kitchen. I feel like I'm much more apt to pop out here, pick some basil, pick chives. The parsley and cilantro, it's a cool weather crop, cool weather herb, but it's getting shaded here by the scarlet runner beans and it's actually doing really well for the summer. My basil is getting eaten by probably a cabbage looper. So I just need to get in here, give it a spray. See all those holes there? So probably several cabbage loopers. Spray it down uh, first with water and then maybe try like insecticidal soap on it and that should take care of it hopefully. Um, but I love how this, these, um, the uh, profusion zinnias, these are the white profusions are spilling over the edge. I think yeah. it's just so pretty. That is really pretty. I love it, it's kind of cascading. And I planted some strawberries in here too because I wanted them to cascade over the edge as well. So they're getting, probably not getting quite enough sun to be super productive but the chives are doing beautifully. And these, I probably come out and cut them maybe once a week or so. We have chives quite a bit in scrambled eggs and things like that. The rosemary and the sage back in here, the lavender are really taking off. So are the weeds, evidently. Look at all these weeds in here too. <laughs> Part of um, it. But the rosemary, oh, it just smells so heavenly. Can you smell it, Jerry? Probably not from way back there, but here. I'll let you guys smell. <laughs> we love rosemary on uh, chicken on the barbecue. It's really, really good. So let's see, I think I want to show you, oh, I didn't want to, want to show you guys. The zucchini, look at these zucchini leaves, you guys. This is the vertical zucchini. Wow. So we did a video on this a while back where I'm growing it vertically up a tomato cage. The key is keep the bottom leaves trimmed off. So can you see, this is the main stem right here. And look at all these leaves I've trimmed off, all these little brown spots where I've cut the leaves right next to the main stem and just kind of trained it up this cage as it's grown. Now zucchini doesn't need the leaves below the first zucchini. So you can see here, here's the first zucchini, no leaves below it and it gives it more airflow. So it really helps with powdery mildew. These here have not gotten pollinated. So let me just show you these. These are gonna, I'm gonna pull right off See how they're kind of soft? So if they would have gotten pollinated, they would be growing. Hopefully this one gets pollinated and grows. But the leaves look super, super healthy. I have trimmed off some for powdery mildew, but look how healthy these leaves look. So it's pretty exciting. I think we'll still get some more zucchini off this plant. One last little garden bed I want to show you is actually the first video we filmed on the Fall Garden Series. It's right over here. Now it is still a little bit warm here for cool weather fall vegetables, but these are actually growing pretty well because it's almost in complete shade all day. So if you go back and watch that video, you'll know when to start your fall garden and what to plant. But what I planted in here, a great thing to start with are greens and radishes. So these are some uh, giant red mustard greens, which are in the fall garden seed collection. A beautiful green, still pretty tiny, but they're growing in spite of the hot weather that we've had. They really enjoy the cool weather best. So if you're starting your fall garden in a southern climate, you might want to start it in shade. In northern climates, you can plant your fall vegetables right in the ground. But we also have, right down here, Jerry, sorry, I know you just like zoomed up, but some radishes coming up and radishes in the heat, you're not gonna get them to bulb up real well. So I'll plant another round, probably in another month or so, but you can eat the greens on the top. And these are the Triton purple stem radish, or maybe they're French breakfast from the fall garden seed collection. Radishes are a great fall crop to start with, especially for kids, because they grow very quickly.
We're going to wrap up the garden tour here, guys. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm so excited. We have some eggplant. Hope your garden is doing well. Comment below. Let us know what you're harvesting here in your garden. And really appreciate you joining Jerry, Mac, and I here on a beautiful, sunny Southern California evening. Thanks, everyone. So head over to calikipgardenandhome.com. Use that code FALLGARDEN for 25% off. And we'll look forward to seeing you guys on the next video. Bye-bye.